We all hope to go to heaven one day, don't we? But most of us are not in any big hurry to get there, correct? That is a human tendency. There was a prestigious doctor that ran into his rabbi in the marketplace, and the rabbi said to the doctor, oh, won't it be wonderful? The Messiah will be coming soon. And the doctor got quite nervous and said to the rabbi, I certainly hope not. Why, I'm finally established in my medical profession. My wife and I just built a beautiful new home. Our children are in excellent schools. And we just booked a trip transatlantic on the Queen Mary II. If the Messiah comes, we've all got to move to Jerusalem. And the rabbi said, not to worry, Sam. Calm yourself. Haven't we prayed in the past to be saved from Pharaoh, to be saved from the Philistines? We can continue to pray to be saved from the coming of the Messiah. Oh, my. But maybe we're more like that doctor than we would care to admit. Wanting to believe in heaven, but wanting to be saved from the experience it takes to get there. And what do we know about heaven? Except maybe from the holy cards. What do we really know and believe about heaven? And so there's today's gospel. There's a group of Jewish leaders who are known as Sadducees, and they don't believe in an afterlife. They don't believe in heaven. So there is no resurrection of the dead according to their way of thinking. And they pose a riddle to Jesus. And it's actually pretty insulting because they pose this riddle trying to make Jesus look ridiculous in talking about a world to come and the resurrection of the dead. And it involves seven brothers who all married the same woman. She buried seven husbands. And then finally, she died. And their question is, well, in the afterlife, which we don't really believe in, whose wife would she be? Well, their question maybe is a bit like ours when we think about heaven. If a baby dies, does that baby remain a baby in heaven? for all eternity. When we die, and God willing go to heaven, how old will we be in heaven? St. Augustine messed around with that idea, and he was convinced that everybody in heaven was age 33. And his reason for that was because that's when Jesus died and rose from the dead. So to be like Jesus, we would all be age 33. But we've got other questions. Will our pets be there? Will we all be thin? Am I going to be bored? Is heaven air-conditioned? We've got lots of questions we ask about heaven. We want to know what it's like. And so that's why it's very important to listen to what Jesus says in the gospel today in answer to those people who don't believe in heaven. Jesus is saying, your questions are irrelevant. Because when we're talking about heaven, we're talking about a realm that's beyond our present human experience. 
where there is no time, for instance. We try to imagine, but even our imagination leaves us short. A hundred years ago, whoever imagined things like an artificial heart or a computer or a television set, for that matter, who even imagined those things? and yet we have them today as realities. Heaven is beyond our imagining in this world. That little creature that we call a creeping caterpillar, there it is moving along, has no idea in its wildest caterpillar dreams that that drab little caterpillar is one day going to wake up and fly and with beautiful butterfly wings. Heaven is beyond our imagining. It's beyond the realm of time. Heaven is beyond our present human experience. So what's left? Faith in Jesus that what Jesus teaches us is true, that there is a heaven, and he came to die for our sins so that we could go there and be with God forever in a happiness that we can't even begin to imagine imagine accurately here on earth. But his love will endure throughout time on earth and in eternity. To believe in Jesus and trust in his word, I am the resurrection and the life. To believe. Now, that doesn't keep us from imagining. The poets, the musicians, they give us little glimpses. Here in America, years ago, when slavery existed in our nation, what a horrible time. But in those days, slaves were not allowed to wear shoes. Only the white gentry in the South wore shoes. And so there was an African-American spiritual that had to do with shoes and heaven. I got shoes, you got shoes, all God's children got shoes. When I get to heaven, gonna put on my shoes and walk all over God's heaven. I got shoes, you got shoes, all God's children got shoes. When I get to heaven, gonna put